Jupiter Ascending. Oh boy, this, this movie. Oh, this fucking movie. I'm sure if you have not seen it, you have heard many, many rumors about how this is such a mess and is hilariously over the top and has so much unintentional comedy, what I assume is unintentional comedy. And yeah, the rumors are all true. This is, this is a very silly movie. Um, I'm not going to lie, I kind of enjoyed this one. Probably not for the reasons that the Wachowskis intended, but I did enjoy it. Uh, at least parts of it. There are other parts that are just, that are not so much so bad, they're funny, but just plain bad. It's very confusing at times. There are things that are not explained very well. It's hard to figure out character motivations and who's on whose side and who's changing sides and why. So many things are happening that have absolutely no effect on the plot whatsoever. Not that there's much of a plot to begin with, honestly. Uh, if you want a quick and dirty plot summary, here it is. Mila Kunis gets kidnapped, Channing Tatum rescues her, rinse and repeat. Seriously, that's the entire movie. This happens like four fucking times. I really don't know what they were trying to do with Mila Kunis' character, but if they were trying to make a strong female protagonist, oh good lord did they fail. This woman exists to be put in situations where she has to be rescued. That's really all she does. It's not until the very end of the movie that she actually does anything on her own. Kunis plays the role of Jupiter Jones. Already we're not off to a good start. <laughs> Jupiter, her father was apparently an astronomy nut and thought Jupiter would make a good name for his daughter, despite his wife's protests. You know, why exactly are we naming our daughter after a planet? Which is a valid question to be sure, but I think the more appropriate question is, why are you naming your daughter after a male god? And it turns out Jupiter is the reincarnation of an extraterrestrial human who apparently has legal ownership over the Earth. D stay with me. <laughs> and, <laughs> and she's being hunted down by these three siblings, who I guess are technically also her children, since she's the reincarnation of their mother, and they're after her because they're also trying to get a piece of this planet, because apparently what they do is... They find these habitable worlds, and they populate them with humans, and let them stew for a few hundred million years or so. And then they harvest all the bodies, once the population has built up enough, and they snatch up all the genetic material from these humans, and use it to make some sort of anti-aging formula. This is the weirdest cosmetics company I have ever heard of since Catwoman. This genetic material can basically be transformed into a literal fountain of youth. There is actually a scene where one of the three uh, siblings steps into a pool of this stuff. So I guess it's not technically a fountain of youth. It's more like a jacuzzi of youth, I guess. Bathtub of youth. I don't know. But she steps in there, comes back out, and she's suddenly 20 years younger. And these three have all been alive for thousands and thousands and thousands of years and are still going strong and would like to keep it going and keep their business running. And that's why they're after Jupiter. You can't make this stuff up. You really can't. Sent to rescue her is Channing Tatum, who is apparently this former slave who is uh, genetically engineered to be part human and part animal. And there are many of these human-animal hybrids in the movie. Channing Tatum happens to be part wolf. There's a character later on who mentions that he is particularly dangerous because he is a wolf without a pack, and therefore very unpredictable. He is a literal lone wolf. Obvious symbolism is obvious. He also apparently used to have wings, but they got clipped because of reasons, so he's also like a fallen angel as well. And he also flies around on these magical hovering roller skates. 
Like, forget the hoverboards in Back to the Future. We got hover skates in this movie. And he seriously flies around the entire time on these things. It's actually kind of awesome. Kind of stupid, but awesome at the same time. Jupiter, of course, ends up falling in love with this guy, even though it... Kind, I'm not sure if it would really qualify as bestiality, because he's part human, but also part dog. In fact, there's even a moment where he says, you know, this probably isn't the best idea. I'm really more dog than man. To which Jupiter says, I love dogs. <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> Oh, this is so stupid. <laughs> anyway, I'm not really sure why all these human-animal hybrids were created in the first place. I think the movie tried to explain it, but didn't do a very good job. And it's not just human-dog hybrids. There are all sorts of combinations. In fact, one of the very first ones that you see on screen is this humanoid creature with an owl-like face. And as soon as Owl Face showed up on camera, that was the first time I knew that I was in for a bumpy ride. I'm like, this is gonna be one of those kinds of movies, isn't it? Oh yeah. Yeah, there's Owl Face, there's Rat Boy, there's Elephant Man, there's a literal Elephant Man. <laughs> it's just... <sighs> this is so ridiculous. I love it. And there's also this race of winged lizard men who I don't know if they're just aliens or if they were genetically engineered as well wasn't really explained but you know what they looked cool Sean Bean is also in the movie and shockingly he doesn't die I'm as surprised as you he works as a beekeeper because he's apparently also a hybrid and he's part bee and his name is Stinger because fuck subtlety. And it's his position as a beekeeper that actually allows him to learn Jupiter's true identity, because as soon as she shows up on his property, every single one of his bees just start flocking around her, not attacking her or anything, just, you know, surrounding her, keeping a safe distance, almost taking up like a defensive position around her. Because you see... <laughs> I'm sorry I keep stopping here, but just... <laughs> because you see, bees are genetically engineered to sense royalty. <laughs> oh, god damn it. I can't take this. And there's also these three really weird-looking bounty hunter characters that look like they came straight out of a really cheesy sci-fi anime. Seriously, there's the girl with the big blue hair, there's this black dude that has kind of this silverish colored hair, but all these hair colors that don't match at all, and there's this one guy that has like this weird techno monocle over his eye, or a technical, if you will. Though you probably shouldn't. And there's a lot of weird shit that happens regarding Jupiter's ownership of the Earth. I mean, first of all, you have all three siblings trying to get a piece of it. Um, although I'm not exactly sure what the sister was planning to do, because she kidnaps Jupiter and then just shows her why they want the Earth, because they want this, you know, fountain of youth shit. But then Channing Tatum shows up to rescue her, and she's just like, oh, well, I guess you're leaving now. And so, yeah, I don't know what exactly her plan was, or if she even had much of a plan. And then there's Douglas Booth's character, Titus. His plan, apparently, was to share ownership of the Earth by marrying Jupiter, which, given that she is supposed to be the genetic equivalent of his mother, isn't that kind of incestuous. I mean, she's not completely his mother, technically, I guess, and he does make it very clear that this marriage has nothing to do with love. It's purely an affair of state just for legal reasons. There's, It's intended to be a loveless, sexless marriage, but still, the whole thing feels a bit 
Oedipal, I, I'm just, yeah, that was weird. And there is one point where Jupiter is trying to assert her ownership over the Earth legally, and the movie actually turns into an homage to Brazil. The old Terry Gilliam movie. It's just comes right the fuck out of nowhere, even has a Terry Gilliam cameo at the end, just in case you weren't sure what they were paying homage to there. Really, I mean, kind of funny in a way, but... Man, this script was all over the place, it really was. And the man who completely steals the show, for better or worse, in this movie, is Eddie Redmayne. This guy. This guy. Oh, man. He was just nominated for an Oscar, and from what I hear, probably has a pretty good chance of winning. And after making this movie, he has almost certainly secured himself a Razzie nomination for next year. It's His performance really is that over the top. He spends most of the movie speaking very calmly in this very hoarse kind of half-whisper. Like he's in this perpetual state of yawning. But then every once in a while, he all of a sudden raises his voice for no reason! And then quiets back down. It was so bizarre. It truly was. He has great difficulty controlling the volume of his voice! I have to think there's no way he would have done all this on his own. He had to have been directed to do this. So I probably shouldn't be blaming him for his performance. I should probably put the blame on the Wachowskis, but... God, that... Throughout this entire movie, the entire process at which this was being made, from, you know, the writing process to shooting it and editing it, was there ever a point where anyone stepped forward and said, you know, we might be making a mistake here. <laughs> I don't know if that was ever said at any time, but you know what? This is one of the most entertaining mistakes I have seen in quite some time. I've actually heard some people compare this movie to Battlefield Earth, and that's a pretty accurate comparison. I mean, especially when you're looking at over-the-top performances. Comparing John Travolta in Battlefield Earth to Eddie Redmayne in this movie is pretty valid, I would say. It's... oh, it is so gloriously stupid. As far as whether I would recommend this movie or not, well, I think based on what I've told you, you already have a good idea of whether you're going to see this or not. If hilariously over-the-top stuff like Battlefield Earth sounds appealing to you, then you will probably enjoy this movie. If you're not the type that can enjoy the so bad it's good types of movies, then you probably won't like this one either. That's pretty much all I have to say there. Um, I did see this movie in 3D. I think you can save your money there because honestly, the 3D didn't really do anything for me in this one. I mean, the visual effects all looked good, but I don't know if this is just because I've kind of become accustomed to 3D, but for whatever reason, it just didn't do it for me. And it's not because this was a post-conversion. It was shot in 3D, as far as I know, but for whatever reason, it just didn't work. But yeah, for the 2D admission price, definitely worth it just for Eddie Redmayne alone. That... Oh... Uh... Oh, man, this was... This was so stupid. And I enjoyed it. I enjoyed it very much. And that about does it for Jupiter Ascending. So until next time, the bees don't lie. Some lives will always matter more than others.